Abhi, welcome to the Keen Eye Creators YouTube channel. Abhi? This is me father. This is me son. And we are a couple of Geordies. From the two. And if you didn't know what that means, it means that we are from the northeast of England. Newcastle upon Tyne. Aye, we aren't in Dex from. Same as that in Dex, we aye. Aye, aye. Right, we're going to turn the Geordie dial down a bit so that you can understand what we're saying. Wow. Right, so let's get serious for a minute. No, I'm, I'm only joking. No, we don't like to take ourselves too seriously on this channel. Not really very seriously at all. But we do take a few things quite seriously, like the things that we make. And of course, we'd like to keep these. We're very serious about keeping with fingers. Yeah. Dad, Hi. have you seen the thumbnail for this video? I like. Well, is it not meant to be about a curve maker? Uh, why? What is its purpose? Uh, yeah. Do you know? Uh, yeah, I do. Are you sure? I'm going to show you. All right, that's good. All right, it's better to show you than to try and tell you. Super. Okay, let's do that. The best thing to do is to probably show you what happens if you don't use a curve maker. So I'll try and make a cut into a piece of wood here and try and make a groove to fit two pieces together like a, like a half lap like this. But we'll do that without the curve maker and we'll see what happens and we'll just offset. So we'll take a cut and then we'll put that thickness up against the stop. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Up against the stop and you would think that that would take this, that amount off. but. Let's see what happens, eh? So, I hope you can see that by using the stop method that your half lap joint is too loose. And that gap there is exactly the same as the thickness of your blade. This screw compensates for the curve of the blade. And you adjust it by screwing in or out until it's exactly the same as that tooth. This works by inserting your workpiece up against the stop, sliding the rod, tightening the thumb screw to lock it in place, and then removing your workpiece. Now you have two positions. You have your first position up against the screw, which is the same thickness as your curve. And then you would set your stop. You would move your stop along and then take your workpiece to where you want to take your first cut. Bring in that stop, bring in that stop, and then make your first cut. Then after your first cut, you would take that up on your second position, move that back in and take your second cut. Uh, it's worth noting that this one's a good fit. And if you're using the curve maker for the first time, you may have to make a couple of adjustments with the screw. You undo the screw to make it a tighter fit and you screw it in to make it a looser fit. All right? Right you are. So we've got a perfectly good curve maker mm -hmm. right here. However, it's a bit on the small side. Mm. So we're gonna make a bigger one. Bigger. Improved. Better. Sexy. Mm -hmm. We've selected our stock and we're cutting it a little long as we do a calibration cut later on. We're milling it square as it's very important for this to be accurate. So now we're setting up to cut the groove for a sliding part of the mechanism. Now we're looking for a loose fit on this because the slider has to move easily. So we've adjusted the curve maker so that it actually gives us a sliding slip fit. Now you don't need a curve maker for this step, but we've got one, so it'd be silly not to use it. Here we're bunging up the end of the groove with a stop. If you'd used a router table you could have stopped the cut, but we used a table saw so it went all the way through. So, the next thing that we're going to do is cut the slider down 
in preparation for the calibration. Okay, we're going to change the table saw blade out and put a dado set in. Now, while we're doing that, it's your job to hit that subscribe button and the on. like. Come on. You know you want to. Come on. Smash it now. Do it. Do it. Do it. Go on. Have you done it? Have you? Come on. Have we? Do it. Oh, well, thanks. If you have, thank you very much. Thank you. So, we've set the height of our dado so that it doesn't fully remove the track that we've previously put in. And now we're hogging out a four and a half inch through it. So we've marked the hole, drilled the hole, and now we're putting the screw in, in the center of the channel to hold the T-track or the slider. Now we're cutting that down and we're going to cut a slot into it for a screwdriver so that it recesses down beneath the surface. So here we are recessing the nut below the surface and we'll secure that in with epoxy. We'll then use the board to line the threads and act as a clamp. Okay, it's time for that all important calibration cut. Now we make sure the slide is up against the stock. We lock it into place. Now we're going to take a slither off the length of the whole thing, calibrating it so that it's all exactly the same length. Here we're drilling the hole for the kerf adjustment screw. And now it's drilled, here we are actually inserting the screw. This one goes flush. Now we're nearly finished because, well, we're putting on some finish. Sexy. Let's be honest. It's the wood that makes this sexy. If you're wondering, this is actually a rogo, but we've never actually seen a rogo with such figured grain. The curve maker's finished and we're setting it up for the first time. We're undoing the screw to try and match as closely as possible to the thickness of the blade. Being careful to go out a little bit further rather than not enough so that we actually end up with a tight joint so that we can tweak it to the perfect fit. Now we're using a couple of test pieces here for the first try just to get it set up before we actually go with the big joint that we've actually got planned. Here we are. First cut. Now we have got the screw out a little bit far here, so I'm expecting this to be a little bit on the snug side. Yeah, as expected. Very small adjustment of the screw turning in. And let's try that again. Just run that through again one more time. And let's see how we go this time. Just looking for that perfect fit and I think we've got it. Yep, there it is. Kerf maker set. Now we're going to go and cut this joint for real. We're setting up to do a half lap joint and bringing the blade up so that it just takes a whisper off both sides of this wood to give us we're setting for halfway. Here we are cutting the joint now. Kerf maker set. We've already done one half just to show you. There we're cutting one half all the way through and then we'll be fitting it together. And there we go. Lovely. I don't know if it's just us, but there's something very satisfying about the way a perfectly fitting joint sounds. And feels. And feels, yes. When you put it together. I don't know, what do you think? Mm. Oh yes, that's a good fit. It really is a good fit, that.